Yes, them into the bottomless pit. And uh, the fourth verse, and I saw thrones, that's what we were. And they that sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. Uh, 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 and then the that group of that came down, uh, the bride then got on the thrones. And I saw souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. So we have, we have a, a, a resurrection. Uh, and I said, and then uh, there are scriptures that also put the Old Testament saints in that group being resurrected at that time. Mm -hmm. All right. So, but so at the at the end of at, at the end of verse four, all of the saved dead is alive oh. and in the millennial reign. Mm -hmm. So the. The only ones that's left in the grave then are the are those that are unsaved. Yeah. All right, and it, and it's verse five, but the rest of the dead, these are the unsaved, live not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Mm -hmm. This is the first resurrection. And then said, it goes. I'm sorry, you said by the end of verse four, what what's going on right there, Brother Paul? All of the all of the saved dead. is out of the grave and in their resurrected body. And the um, and everybody else that's in the grave uh, uh, is unsaved. Verse 5, that, but the rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Now the rest of the dead, now that's the unsaved. And then blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death has no power. What's the second death? That's just mm -hmm. is that is that for those who um die and go to hell? Huh? Go go to go to hell. Okay, yeah. Eternal death. Eternal death. Okay. Yeah, that's in that in that in the eternal death is 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 is, is forever in hell. So blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection on such the second death hath no power. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. So all of the saved that's, 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 in, in, that's in Christ will live and reign with him for a thousand years. And then uh, that brings us to the seventh verse, and that's where, and when a thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. All right. <coughs> that's where we supposed to start tonight. Satan loose for a little season. And the doom of Gog and Magog, doom of Satan. And this is verses 7, 8, 9, and 10. That when the thousand years expire, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog. To gather them together to battle. 
the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. And they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about and the beloved city. And fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beasts and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night, forever and ever. In verse 7 we learn that when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be set free for a season, and shall go out to deceive the nations that are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog. His purpose in deceiving the nations is the same as it has always been. When he leads some of the when he led some of the angels astray, he desired to overthrow God. He suggested to Eve that God was unfair, knowing that if she ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, she would be a little god. Satan demonstrated jealousy in the Garden of Eden. He accused God of being jealous, not wanting Adam and Eve to have knowledge, while all the time Satan himself was jealous of God. At the close of the millennium, Satan goes to the nations, deceives millions, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. Who would dare to estimate the grains of sand by the sea? This vast army will be made up of people born during the millennium. Do not forget that Israel and the nations who befriended her will be in their natural bodies for 1,000 years. And there will be millions born during the millennium who will never have known temptation because Satan will be in the pit throughout the 1,000 year reign. In verse 9, we learn that when Satan has deceived a great number as the sand of the sea, they march upon the breadth of the earth and completely circle the camp of the saints and the beloved city of Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. When the city is completely cut off from all outside help and completely uh, and completely compassed about with steaming millions of soldiers that make up Gog and Magog, when it seems that the case is hopeless and the holy city will be wiped uh, uh, from the face of the earth, a tremendous miracle from Almighty God occurs. Fire mm -hmm. came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. Now, the scripture state that the earth will not be destroyed anymore by water. Mm -hmm. But it did say by what? By fire. fire next time. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so, mm -hmm. so, so, so Gog and Magog, are they, are they both kings? Yeah, or these, are, these, are, these, are, these are the stronger mm -hmm. of, the, of, of, the, of the nations. Okay. Yeah. Okay. In other words, they they've come together now in, in two groups, and so uh, 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 and they and this these two groups he, here have come together, <laughs> okay. and they have totally in, 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 in encompass uh, the saints, God, Christ and the saints, okay. and they think they got them boxed in. And they get in. They, they're gonna. They, they, the devil has sent him on win this time, and he's looking pretty good. <laughs> but uh, but at that very moment, fire comes down out of heaven. Now this also a little bit later when Jesus comes. 
come back the second time. He's already done come back now. And 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 and, and, and when he comes time. back, he leads to war against against I'm again that I'm again. But now So he came back after I'm again during the last part of I'm again. He came back before I'm again. When he comes mm -hmm. back this 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 group is waiting, mm -hmm. and then he destroys that group, mm -hmm. and uh, and then they go into the millennial reign and there's peace on earth for a thousand years, mm -hmm. and so at the end of the thousand years, Satan is loosed again, and he comes in and he goes in, tempts uh, uh, millions of these people. And they and, and they, they all join together along with him with, with the devil. And they gonna wage war now against Jesus and the saints. Mm -hmm. And this is when the fire comes down out so of this, this is the time that this is what some the, the, theologian called the post millennial or the pre millennial. The pre millennial is 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 is, 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 is the right oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. And so, uh, so fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. Again, the Creator is greater than the created. Remember, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. All things were made. By him. Satan was not created a devil. He was created the anointed cherub that covered it. He was perfect in wisdom, perfect in beauty, perfect in all of his ways from the day he was created until iniquity was found in him, according to Ezekiel 28, 14, and 15. Satan became the dragon the deceiver, when he thought to overthrow God. God is greater and finally annihilates the last great army together against the beloved city and the saints of God. It is true that the reproaches of them that reproach thee fell on me. Psalm 69 and 9. And any persecution directed at the saints of God is directed toward God. In this case, God fights the battle by simply sending fire down from heaven and devouring the multi-millions gathered in battle against the holy city and the saints. Who is God? Who is made God? Study, study carefully Ezekiel chapter 38 and 39. The reference in these chapters is to the fast growing power of Russia and communism. The true Russians descended from Jephthah. Jephthah. A Jephthah was a son of Noah. Jephthah. Jephthah. Yeah, Jephthah. Mm -hmm. The capital cities of Russia are named in the first verses of Ezekiel 38. Misho, that's M E S H E C H. M E S H E C H. This this is Moscow, the capital of Russia, and Tuba, T U B A L is the city of Tobosha, chief city of Siberia, referring to Gog and Magog. Ezekiel says, the chief prince of Misha and Tuba, uh, uh, the chief, uh, let's see, uh, the chief prince of Misha and Tuba, the literal translation reads, Prince of Rush, Misha, and Tuba. Thus, Russia is identified in Scripture as the land 
the vast northern empire. Gog is the ruler, head of the great Russian empire. Ezekiel goes further to tell us of Persia, Ethiopia, and many other nations <coughs> coming under the leadership of God like a cloud to cover the land. At that time, the new state of Israel will be without walls, having neither bars nor gates, and it will seem that they will be an easy foe to conquer. Israel is becoming one of the wealthiest nations on earth. And according to Ezekiel 38, verse 10 to 13, the great northern army will descend upon Israel to ponder and destroy. Gog will be the last czar of Russia. When God sends fire down out of heaven and devours <coughs> the army around Jerusalem, there will not be one sinner left upon the face of the earth. Mm -hmm. Only Satan will be left. Mm -hmm. And God is about to deal with him. Mm -hmm. His doom was fixed in the Garden of Eden in Genesis 3.15 when God enlightened Lucifer that the seed of the woman would crush his head. <coughs> he is the last of the evil powers to be destroyed. The beast and the false prophet are already in the lake of fire. And now John sees in the spirit what will literally take place. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. The dragon was the first creature to sin, the first to be cast out of heaven. Sin was born in the heart of Lucifer, the shining one. The beast and the false prophet are already in the lake of fire. They were placed there at the beginning of the millennium and are still there when the millennium closes. Mm. After 1,000 years of burning, mm. they are still burning. Mm. Proof of the Lord's word in Mark 9, 49. Everyone shall be salted with fire. Salt is a preservative. Here in the lake, of fire are two men who have been salted with fire, not consumed, not burned up, but preserved in torment. <laughs> By torment to be tormented forever and ever throughout the ceaseless ages of eternity. Regardless of what you've heard, read, or been taught, <coughs> Hell is a place of literal fire, a place of wailing and gnashing of teeth. Hell is a place where the worm never dies, a place of inquensible fire, a place of fire and brimstone. It would be so bad if you were thrown in there and you finally burn and you just burn right up. But uh, <laughs> you burn on and on and on. Has anybody in here ever been burned? <laughs> I mean, there's that, that, nothing that hurts like that. And just to think that goes on forever. Now, that's not the great throne judgment, is it? Great white throne. Oh, the, the great white throne judgment. Well, we 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 headed in that direction. <laughs> the devil finally comes to the end of his deceiving, destroying, damning crusade, which began in heaven when he decided to overthrow God and take the throne. 
Jesus said, I saw Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Since that day, Satan has been the deceiver, uh, the damner of the souls of men. One day, he will be resting in the lake of fire with the billions whom he led astray. He will be tormented day and night. He will beg for a drop of water to cool his tongue. He will wail and scream and gnash his teeth. God help you, dear reader, not to spend eternity in hell. Amen. 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 Well, excuse me, I got to read. 738. 738. All right, we've we, we got a little more time there. We need to watch the great white throne. Yeah. Time is good. Revelation 20, 11 through 15. And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no more, no place for them. Mm -hmm. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were open, and another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. Mm -hmm. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged, every man, according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the what? Second, Second death. death. Mm -hmm. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was what? Cast, Cast into the lake of fire. And I saw a great white throne. In verse 12 we read, And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. There are two separate visions here. First, John saw the throne and the judge. Second, he saw the dead and their judgment minted out. At the beginning of the millennium, there was a great judgment poured out upon the living. Now at the close of the millennium, there's another great judgment, which is the judgment of the dead. Mm -hmm. The throne set up in Matthew 25, 31, is not the great white throne of Revelation 20 and 11. The farmer was set up before the millennium and the parties judged there will be living persons on earth, the sheep and the goat nations. The great white throne judgment is set up to reward all the wicked dead according to their wickedness. The judgment in Matthew 25, 31 has to do with nations. The great white throne judgment has to do with individuals. Mm -hmm. We read in the Bible of three great thrones in heaven, Revelation 4 and 2, from which this universe is governed. That's where God is. On earth, Matthew 25, 31, the nations will be judged here in respect to their treatment of the preachers of the kingdom as set forth in Matthew 25, 40 through 45. The great white throne where the wicked dead will be judged is Revelation 20 and 11. This will be the greatest of all judgments. Mm. Many things contribute to make it so. The outstanding feature being 
that of the dignity of the judge himself, the greatness of the occasion, the vastness of the scene, the eternal consequences involved, all also contributing factors in making this a judgment such as has never been, and I ever will be again. The great white throne judgment is like no other ever held. Him that sat on the throne, notice that a pronoun is used here. <clears throat> Judge is not named, but we have no difficulty discovering who he is. The father judged no man, but has committed all judgment unto who? The son. The son. That's John 5, 22. The judge is none other than the Lord Jesus Christ himself. The despised, hated, crucified Nazareth is now about to judge the quick and the dead. 2 Timothy 4 and 1. The quick refers to the living He is already judged, Matthew 25, 31. Here at the great white throne, he's about to judge the spiritually dead. Yes, the Son of Man, the Lord Jesus Christ, <coughs> sits on the great white throne. From whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. Please notice, the earth and the heaven fled, not disappeared, or passed out of existence, or were annihilated. The rest of the verse guards against such unscriptorial interpretation of the word, plainly uh, stating, praise God that there was found no place for them. Upon the removal of the earth and the heaven, the stage is set for the new heaven, the new earth, and the pearly white city. There will be a complete change of the heaven and the earth. All things will be made new. According to Isaiah 66:22. 2 Peter 3, 13, between the passing away of the millennial earth and heaven and the appearing of the new earth and the new heaven, not the third heaven where God's house is, but the heaven just above us where Satan's throne is now located. The great white throne is set up and the judgment of the wicked follows. I am sure someone will ask, what happens to the saved Israelites and Gentiles on the millennial earth? The saints, the redeemed, where are they doing this change? God takes care of his own. The scripture is completely silent here, and we dare not speculate. But God can preserve the righteous nations and saints until the new earth, the new heaven, and pearly white city comes into existence. The great white throne judgment is final and will have to do with all the wicked up through the last and up up through the last ungodly person to exist on this earth and there will never be another ungodly person to invade the new heaven the earth and the pearly white city Amen. verse 12 and I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. Mm -hmm. The dead referred to here 
are the spiritually dead. Unbelievers, ungodly men. There is a resurrection of the just, the first resurrection, which we have already discussed. Mm -hmm. We clearly saw that the resurrection of the just and the resurrection of the wicked will not occur at the same time. The small and the great. This statement occurs frequently in the Old Testament mm -hmm. and is found five times in Revelation. Revelation chapter 11, verse 18. Chap Revelation chapter 13, verse 16. Revelation chapter 19, verse 5. Revelation chapter 19, verse 18, and Revelation 20 and 12. Stand before God. Notice carefully, these people, small and great, rich and poor, wise and unwise, kings and peasants, are not standing on the earth. They are not standing on a cloud. They are standing before God Almighty, mm -hmm. held in their position by his omnipotence. Mm -hmm. There's no place to hide. The mountains, the caves, and the rocks are gone. Mm -hmm. The clouds, the atmosphere, the earth have fled away. Mm -hmm. The guilty stands before God with no place to hide. They face God. There's no escape, no shelter. They must face him who sits upon the throne. Hmm. In Revelation 4, verse 1 through 4, John saw a throne. And around the throne, he saw a rainbow. Similar mercy. God placed the rainbow in the sky to assure Noah that the earth would never again be destroyed by water. Ezekiel also saw a boar in the sky. In Revelation 10, 1, the angel stands on the land and on the sea with the rainbow upon his head. In Revelation 4, when the believers are caught up to appear before the judgment seat of Christ to receive the rewards for things done in the body, there's a rainbow of mercy. But here in Revelation 20, 11, we see no rainbow. We see only the blazing white of God's righteousness, holiness, and purity. There's no mercy. Mercy it's forever gone for those who stand before God at the great white throne. Mm -hmm. yeah. Dear reader, will you meet God at the throne where there is a rainbow of mercy? Or will you meet him at the great white throne? Mm -hmm. You're the only person who knows the answer to this question. If you're born again, you will meet him at the throne of mercy. If you're not born again, you will meet him at the blazing white throne of his holiness. Mm -hmm. Verse 12 continues. And the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. Every person on earth has his life and history recorded in the books of God's great book in system. Every thought, every word, and deeds is recorded. Yeah. Nothing is forgotten. Mm -hmm. Nothing is too small to be in and in the records of Almighty God. Mm -hmm. Only infants and idiots 
are accepted. Mm -hmm. If a child passes away before he reaches the age of accountability, mm -hmm. uh, the mind never develops uh, beyond the mind of a child. God's grace takes care mm -hmm. of the innocent. Mm -hmm. But for all who know and who pass into the age of accountability, every act is recorded in the books of heaven. Please note, twice it is, it is recorded that the judgment is according to their works. Many ask, if the righteous go to paradise, many, many ask, if the righteous go to paradise immediately at death, and if the wicked immediately drop into hell, then why the resurrection and the judgment? The answer is clear to all who study and rightly divide the word of truth. No person can receive his full reward until the consummation of all things. The righteous die. The spirit returns to God who gave it and rests. But thy works do follow thee. Mm -hmm. Revelation 14, 13. Mm -hmm. Therefore the righteous cannot receive their full reward until the last soul has received or rejected the Lord Jesus Christ. Every person who contributes money, time, prayers, or whatever to the winning of a soul has a part in the reward for winning that soul. The same is true concerning the wicked. Those who die in sin will be rewarded according to the extent of their wickedness. There are degrees of reward in heaven and degrees of punishment in hell. To whom much is given, of him much shall be required. They that know to do good and yet do it not shall be beaten with many stripes. They that know not and commit things worthy of stripes shall be beaten with few stripes. God is a just God. Mm -hmm. And you may rest assured mm -hmm. that Hitler, Mussolini, Stalin, Pilate, Herod, and Trump <laughs> and their kind. <laughs> that was an addition. <laughs> <laughs> will suffer a greater degree of punishment than will a teenage boy who was reared in a bootlegger's home <laughs> and was never taught about Jesus Christ. God will give justice to every mortal who is 